Good morning, people, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Monday, the 15th of August. I'm Derek Clark, uh, as you know, and I'm joined this morning by Craig Vickers. How was your weekend, Craig? Yeah, it was good. Uh, weather was good, and now um, Monday's come around and it's took a, a dramatic turn for the worst in Glasgow, so... <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, it was uh, at, it was almost unbearable heat down here in Warrington over the weekend. It's uh, a bit cloudier today. It is an absolute godsend. So more of that, please, uh, uh, Weller. Um, that would be uh, much appreciated. It's been a really <laughs> extreme heat down here. We've had a, an amber alert for, for heat as well. So uh, hopefully that's us over the... Uh, over the, the, the extreme uh, weather conditions. Um, but people are tuning in to talk Rangers, not weather, of course. And um, Before we do that, folks, uh, as you can see, a bit of housekeeping, the little ticker below, we've still got that fantastic offer on the website. Just £2 for two months' worth of content. Um, just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. And I'll pop the link in the little uh, comment section as well. Uh, so if you hit that, you can find out how to sign up. Um, so many of you are uh, taking advantage of it, incidentally. So thank you very much for doing so. Uh, it's just £2.99 per month thereafter. So it's an absolute bargain. Um, OK, let's talk uh, Rangers, Craig. Another, you could say, routine win at the weekend. 4-0 uh, against St Johnston at Ibrooks. Uh, they were made to work for it, of course. Uh, Malik Tillman with another header. Tremendous uh, finish, it has to be said, uh, uh, putting Rangers uh, ahead. Uh, Antonio Cholak uh, scored again in, in the second half. Another nice finish after being set up by Rabi Matondo. Uh, Scott Arfield uh, added uh, the third uh, before he turned provider. And Tom Lawrence uh, volleyed home uh, goal number four. Uh, that's nine goals in three games without conceding. Craig, uh, ideal preparation, you could say, heading into Tuesday night. Yeah, it was. And I think it was probably a continuation of the Union game where Rangers went quite sort of relentless through the 90 minutes. You know, there was still some some bits that I think even Gio admitted post-match that wasn't, you know, wasn't as well as it could be. You know, I thought St. Johnson had some early joy. They obviously had that, that big chance with, with Theo Bear in terms of, you know, obviously he was on the deck and he, he was point blank range and he missed it. So... I thought, you know, Rangers again, as they were against Union, they were clinical when the moments came. You know, I think I think you wrote the, the stats bomb match report when I think Rangers had a an XG of one point nine three and you know they ended with four goals. So and I, th I thought, you know, the subs pretty much killed the game. Arfield again, you know, he's he's obviously having a very good start to the season, as I as I said on Twitter, you know, he's already now halfway to matching his goal tally in the, <laughs> in the Scottish Premiership from last season. So you know, there was a lot of eyebrows raised in the summer when, when he was given a new deal. And I think that, you know, he certainly sort of answered the critics in these opening weeks. But, yeah, you know, I like I like to set up. You know, I don't think the, the personnel in the pitch was quite conducive to, to the way that, that Rangers were playing in terms of obviously having Ryan Jack high up. And I think you saw the impact when, when Lawrence and Arfield came on. Um, You know, obviously, Matondo off the left. thought he maybe struggled in terms of his, his ability to, to go 1v1. You know, his decision-making was a bit... But then, obviously... He, he, basically creates the, the third goal in terms of rounding the keeper and then he's patient, waits for Arfield to come and then, you know, he just squares it across. So, yeah, you know, I thought it was a clinical performance. You know, I said the same against against Union where, you know, I don't think Rangers, the tempo was was under miles an hour, but I thought when the moments came, they were really, um, really took advantage. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, well, I've, I've made a, a, a boo-boo. I put in Kilmarnock when they view. Uh, thanks for to uh, the comment that comes in that name says Kilmarnock. That's my fault. Uh, Monday morning, uh, folks. Uh, yeah, totally. Even worse when you consider who Kilmarnock played this weekend. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, they didn't put much resistance up, it has to be said. Um, let's uh, move on. So a couple of interesting comments uh, coming in here. Um, of course, uh, Scott Spelder makes a point. He's got reservations about John McLaughlin, Craig. I hope I'm proved wrong, but John McLaughlin does not fill me with 100% confidence, especially with big games approaching. I, listen, I've just I just said uh, nine goals, zero conceded. He didn't have much to do on, on Saturday. Um, but for me, I think, uh, for me, I don't have any reservations about the goalkeeping position. Where, where do you stand on that? Yeah, I'm probably along the, the same lines. I think I think domestically, you know, and I, I know there was a lot of criticism about McGregor last season domestically, but I think in terms of shot stopping, I think domestically, I, 
a lot of the time that the keeper is sort of redundant because Rangers don't concede that a huge amount of chances. You know, you, you sort of get in on Saturday. So he doesn't have one really big chance. You know, as I said, the three will be a chance. He didn't even, you know, it wasn't even a shot on target at the end of the day. But I, I sort of can see where he's come from in terms of there was a lot of clamour for McLaughlin in the summer. And then, you know, these opening weeks, there has been, you know, obviously the, the Union game in, in terms of the first leg and, and Teddy Toomer's goal, you know, he probably has to do a lot better. He likes to go through his hands. So, yeah, I can I can sort of see, you know, that in terms of the, the clamour for McLaughlin in the summer and what he's produced so far, you know, it's not, you know, he's not produced heroics. But at the end of the day, you know, it's if Rangers are solid defensively, then, you know, the goalkeeper becomes a little bit redundant. And I thought... You know, I was first to criticise McGregor last season, but, you know, defensively Rangers were, you know, a huge drop-off from the 55 season, and I don't think that helped McGregor at all in terms of the quality of chances that Rangers were conceding. So, you know, like, I think it starts from the front, you know, in terms of the goalkeeper. In terms of, you know, if Rangers are defensively solid, then I think the goalkeeper comes a little bit um, immaterial. But, you know, I like McLaughlin. You know, I think there's, there's worse... I think Rangers there's worse sort of two goalkeepers that have that, that Rangers have. So, and it's obviously... A, an area that they probably will have to look at in terms of, you know, that McGregor and McLaughlin are the youngest and Rangers have to look to the future. But, you know, I think in the short term that I don't think McLaughlin's one of the biggest issues in the team. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you, Craig. There's going to be people, of course, that, uh, that are in the, the Alan McGregor camp, um, but it's apparent that John McLaughlin is the, the trust of the manager being the number one, um, and I think that's going to be the case uh, going forward. Um, number of other uh, comments coming in. We'll try and get to a few of them, uh, folks. Uh, Pete Lawrence says, Craig, I uh, think uh, Ben Davis will start tomorrow night. Uh, of course, came in uh, at the weekend. Um, what was your your sort of assessment of him? Do you think he's going to start alongside uh, Goldson tomorrow? Of course, no James Sands at, at the weekend. Yeah, it's a difficult one. You know, I thought that the, the, the chance that Sajosin had in the first half, I thought he and Barisic didn't cover them in glory. I thought they, they got caught under the ball a bit and you know, it was a mix-up of communication. I think that was one of one of Davies' main concerns when he came in, that a lot of people were saying he's not he's not the greatest in the air and you know maybe one of his weaknesses. But I thought on the ball he was good. You know, I thought you know when you look at Rangers pass map from, from the game, you saw how high up both Lundstrom and Jack were playing, you know, were basically playing as, as eights and I think that was sort of facilitated by the fact that it was Davis alongside Goldson in terms of, you know, he's left-footed, you know, he's got that ability to play passes inside. You know, if, if you play Sands or, or Suter at left centre-back, a lot of the, the play just goes out to the full-back and then, you know, it's difficult to get it back inside. So, yeah, I thought, you know, I thought it was decent. You know, I thought defensively maybe in the first half he was a little bit shaky in terms of the chance that, that Sidney Johnson had, but I think you need to look at what he brings on the ball. And I thought on Saturday, you know, it wasn't a sort of... Um, you know, I don't think he set the world alight in terms of what he, what he produced in possession, but I think you can see what, you know, the benefits that he brings to the team by just having that sort of left, that left-footed option alongside Goldson. Far better balance, and I thought you saw that, you know, in terms of Rangers' ability to play through the centre on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, some comments coming in uh, with regards to Borna Barisic. I know there was reports yesterday uh, a bit being made from, believed to be from Nottingham Forest. Uh, I'll do some digging, folks. I'll try and uh, get to the bottom of that um, to, to see if there's any any truth in it. Again, though, Craig, he came in, he played on Saturday, did well, I thought. Um, I know uh, Rud van Yilmaz, I think, understandably, I think it's going to take the, the young lad time to not only get accustomed to uh, the way that Rangers like to play, but Scottish football, another country, another language he has to learn. It's, it's, it's unfair, I think, just to expect him to come in and hit the ground running. And Borna, for me, I think he's I think he's done well so far. I mean, he had a good pre-season. Um, I know I think everyone had an off night in Belgium. There's no doubt about it. Um, of course, the Livingston opening goal, I don't think he covered himself in glory. But that aside, I think uh, he's been pretty... He's been pretty solid. Um, no, no qualms about starting him tomorrow night. No, probably not. You know, I agree. I thought after the the chance that Johnson had, he recovered really well. You know, pretty strong defensively, both sides of the ball. I thought he performed very well. And yeah, you know, I think that, that he will start on on Tuesday. I can't see Yelma has been thrown in, especially when he's not obviously played. He also didn't play on Saturday either. So, you know, I think it's good, sort of good to have. You know, I think the one thing that that we hope that. Yilmaz coming in would bring was was a bit of competition for Barisic, you know, in terms of, you know, we'll drive him on and 
I think you've maybe seen that in the last few weeks in terms of his performances. You know, I thought that, you know, as I say, again, the, the chance that St. Johnson have probably doesn't doesn't come himself in glory. You know, I don't think he's, he's convincing and clearing it. I thought, you know, I think Davis is culpable as well. But, yeah, you know, I thought it was a strong performance. And, and I can see him starting again on on um, on Tuesday night. You know, I thought, especially going back to the, the second leg against Union, you know, you saw that the fans sort of getting on his back and in terms of... Um, you know, he wasn't playing forward quick enough, but at the same time, you know, it takes maybe a couple of, takes maybe 45 minutes to work out what Union were presenting in terms of, you know, they were pretty much going with three for one against Kent, you know, and, and maybe Lawrence yeah. wasn't shown for the ball enough in the first half, but I think you saw against Union that even though it was fortuitous, you know, he, he's crossed, he's created two of the three goals. So, yeah, you know, I don't think, don't think there'll be many quams starting them on, on Tuesday. You know, I think that Obviously, defensively against against some wingers, it can look like pretty vulnerable. But you know, it's up to Rangers to to perform solidly without the ball, and I think that will that will help Barisic. Yeah, uh, Mark makes a good point. Says uh, Bonner, I think, you know, that looking the most confident he's been in a while, uh, taking shots instead of crossing. Um, yeah, I tend to agree. He looks uh, he looks uh, pretty pretty decent so far. He's had a good start to the season. You've got to say. Um, comment coming in. Uh, a nice comment here from a PSV perspective, Craig. Uh, I'm not trying to pronounce that. The Vlee Gender Brabander. Um, hopefully, I've got that right. Rangers, great club. Let's have a great match tomorrow. Greetings from a PSV supporter. Well, great to have you tuning in, uh, buddy. Uh, and yeah, we totally echo those sentiments. And uh, two uh, European heavyweights going head to head tomorrow at Ibrox, and then of course a week on Wednesday at the Phillips Stadion. Um, how much are you looking forward to this game, Craig? Uh, I've done an interview, folks. Um, you can see it on our, our YouTube channel. In fact, there's two interviews you can, you can check out there. Malky uh, McLennan gets in touch. Thanks for uh, the nice comments, Malky. Uh, one with, with Dapple Mabudi uh, on there that, that you can find uh, that I've done yesterday. Um, and then uh, Rick Elsrink, uh, the Dutch football expert on PSV. Uh, I spoke to him as well, and you can find that on the uh, YouTube channel, folks. Um, and he was talking about the match, and, and they're very much looking forward to it. I see uh, Zavi Simons also said that, that Rangers will be playing with a 12th man at Ibrox um, with the, the fans behind them. Um, they're really looking forward to coming over and experiencing and sampling that historic uh, Ibrox atmosphere, Craig. Um, but for me, it's, uh, I think it's crucial that Rangers take some sort of advantage over to Holland um, next week. Um, but it's two mouth-watering ties, isn't it? Yeah, as you know, I think that, again, you know, it's, it's sort of different this time around instead of not having the, the second leg at Ibrox. Obviously, it's the first leg this time around. And, you know, we saw the atmosphere that, that the fans create when, when Rangers need something because they've, they've dug themselves, usually dug themselves a hole in, in terms of the first leg. So, yeah, you know, it's you know something really to look forward to. I think PSV have got a lot of, you know, really, really good individuals. And, you know, they obviously they, they took out Monaco, who, who had a really strong end to, to the season in France last time around. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's something to look forward to. Pretty sure every player will be relishing it. I think you see that in terms of the, the performances at Ibrox in, in Europe. Also, going back to last season, Europa League, I think the players really relish these Ibrox atmospheres. They don't, they, they don't, you know, view it as a sort of burden. You know, they really, really use it to their benefit. So, yeah, you know, it's something that, going to have a look at PSV later today, you know, I, I, you know, I know sort of about their individuals, but hopefully you get a better idea of the specifics and how maybe Van Nistel really wants to play, how they may approach it and how Rangers may counteract that, because I think that's where sort of Gio's being at his best when, you know, he's got something to counteract. So, yeah, you know, something to look forward to tomorrow, definitely. Yeah, Sonny Boy says a good result for PSV at the weekend, or PSV as uh, they're, they're uh, pronounced over in uh in Holland, as uh, Rick corrected me yesterday. Um, yep, absolutely. 5-2 um, against Go Ahead Eagles. have won their first two games uh, against a sort of moderate opposition, you've got to say. Teams are expected to beat. The, the Monaco match um, was a right uh, slog. Uh, for both teams, of course, going, going hard at it. Again, two uh, high-quality sides. Uh, of course, you look at the players they've got, Craig, and you're doing the analysis later on today. But, but the one that stands out, of course, Joey Veerman, um, linked with Rangers, of course, uh, last season. Uh, Cody Gakpo is one that stands out for me. Uh, and Manchester United interested in him. Figures quoted of around £35 million. Quite why you would want to join Man United at this point in time uh, would be something else. But um, they've got quality all throughout their side. Rangers cannot afford another off night like we've seen in Belgium, can they? 
No, nah, definitely not. You know, I think so. You mentioned Veerman there, and, and you look at their midfield, and they've got you know Ibrahim Singari, who is highly rated in France. I think there was a lot of people that were surprised they didn't go to England. You know, they, they went to the Eredivisie, so um, yeah, they've got you know threats ever even look the young up front. You know, I know he's he's sort of been characterised by that sort of failed spell at Barcelona, but you know he's still a huge threat, and it shows you that the level he's at, the, the Barcelona. I thought even, you know, I watched a bit of La Liga and he, he had to be pretty decent under Xavi in the second half of last season. I don't think he was set the world alight, but he was a huge aerial threat. I think Rangers really, really need to watch that. And I think that's something that that may come into Gio's um, thinking in terms of, you know, how you, you sort of counteract that. You know, as I spoke about earlier in terms of Davis maybe not being the, the biggest um, aerial threat and, you know, maybe how PSV made the look to exploit that. So, yeah, you know, it's... You know, dynamics obviously different in terms of having the first leg at Ibrox and how much the Rangers sort of go for it and, and what do they deem a big enough margin and, and do they, you know, maybe the, the team, you know, do we keep it close so we can take it over to Holland? You know, the worst thing that the Rangers can do maybe is is open up and then maybe get picked off 2-0. I know obviously away goals don't count now, but yeah, you know, it be interesting to see how we, how we approach it. I think the last time, obviously, the, the first leg was at Ibrox was um, the Red Star Belgrade game and Rangers are 2-0 up at half time, so you know, a similar scoreline would, would go well, but yeah, you know, be a really good atmosphere. And you know, I think Rangers will back themselves, you know. I think that, that PSV will know that Rangers are really, really strong at home. You know, they know that they probably looked at that first leg against Union and thought, you know, maybe we'll, we'll be preparing for a union in the next round, but you know, the Rangers sort of rolled back in the end. But yeah, yeah, we have something to look forward to, you know, and I think that that, that Rangers can really fancy themselves. Yeah, uh, Paul McGarrigal says uh, De Jong fit for headers. Yeah, he is, he is good in the other the big centre forward. Uh, some interesting comments coming in. I like this one. Uh, uh, Mind waves. Uh, watch out for those set pieces. Uh, greetings from an Ajax fan. Oh, good to have you uh, tuning in, buddy. Uh, and I'm sure Giovanni van Bronckhorst and the coaching staff will be well aware uh, of the threats that the Rude van Nistelrooy side will pose. Uh, Graham Brown does touch on that. Have faith in GVB and his coaches. They will know how PSV uh, play. There is a that that is a nice sort of uh, link, of course. PSV and Rangers, Van Nistelrooy and Van Bronckhorst, who played to, uh, against each other, of course, when when Rangers beat PSV in that double header uh, in the Champions League uh, at the uh, tail end of the tail end of the the nineties, of course. Brilliant night, at Ibrooks uh, that night, four one. I remember and they just uh, outplayed uh, PSV on that occasion, uh, and I think that the, the Ibrooks crowd certainly uh, played their part that night, and they've been asked to do so. Uh, tomorrow night as well, as Ian Campbell quite rightly says, uh, a reminder for an uh, all-in uh, blue sea of Ibrox tomorrow. If you're heading to the ground, uh, Rangers have requested you wear a, a something blue, uh, a blue shirt uh, to, to try and create a, a proper blue sea of Ibrox. It'll be quite a sight there uh, tomorrow night uh, against uh, PSV, of course. Um, yeah, really looking forward to it. Uh, let's get to some of the other questions that are, that are popping in here. Um, let's see here. Da, 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 let's see. What we're, um, good question, actually, from Paul again. He says, uh, could Davis and Kamara come in next to Lundstrom? I wouldn't be opposed to that, Craig. Uh, I think Stephen Davis, for me, the guy, let's the, the, uh, the, uh, eliminate his age here. He can still do the business. Uh, he's he's uh, He's always a 7 out of 10 for me. I would quite happily see him come in just to add a bit of calmness in that midfield. Kamara, we know. Uh, Giovanni van Bronckhorst is his trusted uh, lieutenant uh, in Europe. Um, could you see that that midfield trio happening tomorrow? Yeah, perhaps. You know, as I think we've, we've spoke about, I think PSV's strength is definitely in the midfield you know, in terms of the individuals and, and maybe the way that they move as a unit as well. I think in previous ties against these sort of calibre opposition, you know, you can go back to last season. I think Gio sort of he sort of vacated the midfield in terms of, you know, he's been he's been keen to play play over it. I think you saw that in the the, the Leipzig game in terms of it was Kamara and Jack in midfield, but you you would see Kamara sort of go up and, and support. I think obviously Aribo was playing as a nine, and I think that was obviously you know conscious that that Rangers was that centre forward and he needed more support up there. So. You know, it'll be interesting to see whether Rangers actually, you know, how much they, they play through midfield and med- whether they do go a bit more direct. I think if they do, then Morelos probably needs to play as opposed to Cholak. You know, and obviously we're, we're getting onto a separate discussion there. But yeah, you know, I wouldn't see, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if you beefs up the midfield in terms of, you know, quality and numbers because that is where, where PSV's strength lie. But 
I think equally, you know, if he does want to go over, then I think we'll probably see a, a pivot of um, probably Ryan Jack and Lundstrom, which worked well in, on route to Seville last season. And sort of having that defensive balance behind the ball when, and allowing sort of, um, you know, Kent and, you know, whoever plays in the right was Matondo to attack down the side. So, yeah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised either way whether, you know, Ryan Jack comes in or whether Gio, um, you know, goes with maybe Kamara in there. And I think, you know, I think the, the team line when it drops an hour before kickoff, I, I think that'll tell you a lot of what Gio, Gio plans to do. Yeah, um, let's see some other questions coming in. A lot of people are sort of agreeing with that. And um, Mark Lamont uh, disagrees. He says uh, too defensive with they three in the middle. Need Lawrence or Tillman in there playing at home. Nothing to fear. Listen, it will be interesting to see what team uh, that Giovanni van Bronckhorst opts for. Of course, that the the trusty duo last season, as Mark says, was at the Jack and Lundstrom uh, midfield. Giovanni van Bronckhorst has an array of options to choose from. And especially going forward, Craig, I think we touched on this uh, with the win at the weekend, uh, the substitutions that came on. And John Lundstrom touched on that, that when you make subs now, you don't necessarily weaken the side, you can strengthen it. And it just, he says the squad is amazing. Um, And Rangers really have addressed that issue, haven't they? It was a problem for them last season, putting teams away, struggling to score goals, putting round pegs and square holes at times. not by choice, of course, with the injuries and what have you. But now there's so many attacking options up there. It's not something that you're concerned about getting goals, is it? No, it's not. You know, and I think as I touched on earlier, you, you know, I think you can, you can sort of pick goals in the performance against um, St Johnston and, and Union, and you can even go back to Kilmarnock. But at the end of the day, you know, you know, they've, they've racked up big, big score lines, and I think that's something that you know, at least domestically, that Rangers have to do a lot better. You know, I think. I think when you go back to last season, you know, the biggest, biggest score margin, I think, was a 5 0 against Hearts, at least at Ibrox in the league. And, you know, you, you compare that sort of to, to Celtic last season, and they already had like, like two 6 0s inside the first month of the season, yeah. you know, and it's about scoring goals against these teams. You know, you're not going to obviously win 3 4 0 every week against, you know, Hearts Hibs, but it's, you know, these teams in the bottom six, you know, like, like St Johnston and, and perhaps St Mirren and, 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 and these type of teams that the Rangers really need to start stick goals against because I think that that goal difference against Celtic last season it was a psychological sort of barrier in terms of I know it was three points the, the difference until you know maybe was that that old firm game at Ibrox in May but you know the goal difference was was hugely in Celtic's favour which obviously isn't great so I think that's something that the Gio Gio's addressed this summer and I think he's touched on it after he touched on it obviously after Saturday and he touched on it after the, the West Ham game in pre-season in terms of you know, when we go one 0 up, we don't want to, you know, collapse back and protect the lead. I think that was something that the Rangers were guilty of doing during the early days. You know, they do want to go and kill the game off and get three four and, and rack up these score lines. So, I think you see that in the options coming off the bench. You know, obviously having Lawrence and Arfield, you know, two of the biggest goal threats in, in the team from midfield. You know, obviously, you know, obviously Mirelles didn't start on, on Saturday, but you even saw the goal threat that he brought uh, at the weekend as well. So, yeah, you know, definite options, and I think five subs obviously benefits that. Yeah, it certainly does. A uh, good point made by a good friend of the show, Graham. He uh, says, uh, we'll have to see us go attacking again, bring Kent in on the left. All in that, go with the same as the weekend. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have uh, any reservations with regards to that. Kenny also says uh, PSV will be a decent test. Uh, we're full of confidence at the moment, though. You're quite right, Kenny. Uh, playing against a team who will play football and not part the bus. This is what's so refreshing about European football, Craig, isn't it? Uh, and... No disrespect to sides like St. Johnston and, and Kilmarnock. Um, they're not there to entertain as such. They're there to uh, earn points. And if they open up, they'll be they'll be picked apart. But in terms of punters that go to Ibrooks every week, there's something refreshing about seeing a team actually come out and play football and take the game to Rangers. And it just makes for a much more entertaining spectacle, doesn't it? That's I think that's uh, it's, uh, why everyone sort of enjoyed the the run last season and run, in fact, in Europe in the last uh, four seasons, you've got to say, as a fact, teams come in and have a go and Rangers going up against some of the uh, top football insides in the continent. Yeah, you know, I think I think even saw that in pre-season, you know, and obviously it was obviously pre-season, but in terms of having West Ham and, and Tottenham at Ibrox, you saw that the yeah. teams that come on to Rangers. And I thought you saw, you know, sort of Gio laying the foundations of that in terms of how he maybe wants to evolve in Europe in pre-season. You saw the goals against West Ham in terms of, you know, it was a lot of short short passing and across the back line. And then, you know, you provoke the press from the opposition and then you'd be able to play into the space. I think you saw that for Lawrence's goal against West Ham. And, and you know, Gio spoke about that after the game in terms of, 
you know, we want to try and provoke teams onto us and then being able to play into the space because they've got these sort of huge threats in attack in terms of, you know, Lawrence and Kent and Matondo and, you know, all these players. And I think I think you may actually, you know, even see that on Tuesday in terms of a lot of people were saying in pre-season, you know, why are we sort of, you know, why are we using the goalkeeper and build-up because he's going to be redundant in, in most domestic games. But I think it was in preparation for these, these sort of games in terms of having more control of the ball. You know, I think that was one thing during the, the run to Seville, you know, that, I know Rangers obviously played direct, but it's not a, not a sustainable way to play. And I think you saw the the flaws of that in the Europa League final in terms of Rangers couldn't really play through midfield until you know Davis came came on and sort of took matters into his own hands. So yeah, you know I think that it does make for a, a far better spectacle, and I think that's something that that Rangers have benefited from over the years in terms of you know, a lot of people have said they're better you know in Europe than than domestically. You know I, I'm not sure about that, but I think definitely the, the profile of players that Rangers have is definitely more. Sort of conducive in terms of you know being able to play into space, attacking space, and you know killing teams off. So yeah, you know I think that will play into Rangers' hands tomorrow, and it's just up to just up to the forward players to, to you know take those chances when they come along. Yeah, yeah, it'll be intriguing to see how uh, the match uh, unfolds tomorrow night. And um, just before we go, I just wanted to um, we received a, a nice message from uh, one of our uh, viewers, Jack uh, Besto. He says, uh, "Hi, folks, been loving the content, enjoying the morning briefings every day. Uh, my father is doing the Bears Up Ben Nevis Challenge. Could you possibly give him a plug on tomorrow's show?" Uh, I think that was uh, just at the tail end of last week. He's 63 and supported the Bears uh, all of his days. If you want to donate as well, uh, you can go onto his Just Giving page um, and it's uh, just uh, forward slash just justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash John uh, hyphen B-E-S-T-O-W and you can donate. So yeah, all the best and uh, good luck to that. No problem at all. And um, fantastic cause and, and raising money for a, a really worthwhile um, charity uh, as well. Um, before we go, in fact, another point out. Uh, Kenny says a uh, shout out to the women's team. Had a good, res- a great result yesterday, banging in the goals every week. Can see them dominating the league for a good few seasons. Yep, uh, an eight 0 win against uh, Aberdeen uh, yesterday. Absolutely fantastic uh, from uh, uh, from them. And of course, uh, I think they won fourteen 0 in the opening day uh, as well. So yeah, that's uh, a great start to the campaign. Uh, for the Rangers women's team, and, and long may uh, that continue. Ian Campbell says, Derek, can you make a link for that charity? I will do so. Uh, what I'll do is I'll stick the, the link in now. Uh, good point there, Ian. I'll, I'll get it fired up. Um, so as I'm doing that, I'll point. Uh, I'll direct a question to you, uh, Craig. Uh, there's some, so many comments coming in here. Um, let's touch on this one. Pete Lawrence uh, on his namesake. Tom Lawrence breezes games. He reminds me of De Boer. Tom Lawrence, great to see him, of course, score uh, at the weekend. Uh, it was a tidy finish, you've got to say. It, the ball came at him really sharp and he dispatched it uh, with ease. Uh, I've been impressed with him. Uh, when he was linked with Rangers, I've, of course, it's, it's common knowledge. I went on record says he'll be an absolutely terrific signing. Um, do you think he's got a big part to play in the, these two games? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think you saw against Union the, the impact they had in, in terms of, you know, when Union, especially when Nike Montes, when, when it went 2-0 and, and they had to sort of come out and, and try and get the goal, I think you saw the impact they had. Obviously, that he passed for um, Cholak's goal in terms of the, the cross you passed. The Tavernier was excellent. And, you know, I, I really like you sort of off the ball as well. I think he's really, he's really good. You know, he covers ground really well. I think he's really aggressive in the challenge. I think that's something that the Derby fans pretty much said in terms of, you know, he actually might get sent off on an old firm and, you know, maybe he does need to curb his aggression. But I think, you know, he, he certainly straddled the right line in terms of what he's produced. You know, he's so aggressive in terms of, you know, that counter press in terms of winning the ball back quickly. And then he's a real driving force in terms of his ability to sort of drive into space and, you know, pick out those, those sort of long range passes. So, you know, I've liked what I saw to him, especially the first, first few games. And I think, you know, he will have a, a big part to play, especially... In these games where Rangers will need to, you know, show, especially both sides of the ball, there will be periods where, you know, they will need to, you know, maybe press high, maybe drop off in, in terms of protecting the lead. So, yeah, you know, I think he would definitely have a big part to play against PSV. Yeah, yeah, I, t- I, t- I totally agree. Um, what I'll do is, folks, uh, that'll do us there, but uh, I'll, I'll pop that... Uh... Link in the, the the just giving link uh, in the comments section. It's just uh, popped in my emails there, folks. So I'll just fire it in there. Um, just a reminder, we've got that great offer on the website just now. Just two pounds uh, for two months worth of content. 
Uh, loads of you signing up to it. So uh, thank you very much for doing so, saying great things. Just £2.99 per month uh, thereafter. Uh, we're practically giving it away. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. Um, lots of content on the website uh, today and coming your way, as Craig mentioned earlier on, he's done a, a deep dive analysis into PSV and what Rangers can expect. As I mentioned earlier as well, I've spoken to a Dutch football expert uh, to give us an insight as well. You can find that on our YouTube uh, channel. Uh, and uh, there's a, a Rangers press conference today as well. Uh, Joshua Barry is there for us at the, the Rangers training centre. So um, we'll bring you everything from that uh, as well as we build up ahead of tomorrow night's uh, huge clash against PSV Eindhoven. But uh, we'll be back again tomorrow. But until then, enjoy the rest of your Monday.